Hello friends, welcome to Rajesh Data Engineering. In this video, I'm going to talk about data type issue while writing data frame data into Azure SQL database or data warehouse. This is one of the most common requirement in Databricks development. While writing data frame data into any data warehouse, there are two modes, either it could be append or overwrite. In overwrite mode, the table structure would be dropped in the data warehouse and it would be recreated based on the structure from the data frame. Coming to append mode, it will retain the table structure along with data in the data warehouse, but on top of that, it will just insert the new records from the data frame. So when we are performing overwrite, what happens is, let's, let's say we have a table in the data warehouse, it is having data types such as integer, string, uh, date, you know, it's a combination of uh, these data types. And in the data bricks side, in the data frame, we have all the columns, only string type. Now what happens is, you know, when we are writing this data frame into data warehouse with overwrite mode, what happens is it will trunk, it will drop the table structure in the data warehouse and it will recreate. While recreating, it will recreate with data types only where care. Because in the data frame, all the columns are string type. As a result, while recreating the table in the data warehouse, it will create all the columns with var care. But this is not uh, ideal. This is not expected result. So let us assume, you know, after writing the data frame data into data warehouse table, there are certain procedures which will consume the data from this table and it will do certain operations. While doing certain calculations, it might fail because all the columns, even the integer columns are string type now. So it might fail the entire uh, development. It, it might fail the entire pipeline. And coming to append mode, the append mode will not write the data successfully into Azure Synapse Analytics if there is a mismatch between the data type, between data frame and data warehouse. So while writing itself, it will be failed. So these are the common data type issues while writing data frame data into any data warehouse or database. How can we handle? In order to handle these scenarios, I have created one automated solution. So this will work with most of the databases. I have thoroughly tested this in Azure Synapse Analytics and Azure SQL database. It will work. So let's get started with the demo. This is my Azure portal. I have created one database stb iphone raja data engineering i have created sample database that is adventure works so it is having these tables now let's say i am logging into the same data warehouse using ssms now let's say here i am going to create one table let me execute this step and i can explain so here basically you know i have created one table product new this is containing these columns along with the corresponding data type. Okay, here you can see data type, it's combination of integer, n care, decimal, and also date time. You can see, you know, it's combination of various data types for this table. Now, let me show the data also. Now we have created only the table structure. So we don't have any data, it's empty. Now, let's say I have to populate this data from Databricks data frame. For that, let me get into Databricks environment. This is my Databricks environment. My cluster is up and running. Now, I have created one function, user defined function. Okay, it is called Spark data type equal. So here, what I have done is, this UDF will take one data type as input. So this data type is actually in database standard, database or Azure Synapse standard. It will take as input and it will uh, compare and based on that it will return Databricks equivalent data type. So for example, if the input would be care or where care, then the output would be string type. So in this uh, function, basically what I have done is you know, it will take Databricks uh, data type as input and it will out give output of Databricks equivalent data type. So uh, this is not the exclusive list, but uh, as per your use case, you can extend or you can make it more accurate. Okay. For this demo, I have created this function and finally it will return the output data type that is equivalent of data frame. This is one of the user-defined function I have created. And in the second user-defined function, what I have done is 
Now I'm going to give input of data frame which we are planning to write into data warehouse and also the table name on which table I want to write. For example, in this case, I want to write into sales product new. Product new is the table name and sales CLT that is a schema name. I want to insert into this table. So basically I have to give this uh, table name along with schema as input for table name and data frame. Okay, in this notebook, we are going to give one, uh, we are going to create one data frame that I want to write into this table. So what happens is, you know, based on this table name, it will first split schema name and the table name. Then in data warehouse, we have uh, in uh, SQL data warehouse, you know, we have a system table information schema dot columns. Okay, this table will contain all the column names along with the data type for all the tables. For this case, you know, for this table, we want to insert product new. So for this table, you know, we will take, we will collect all the column names and corresponding data type. So we are creating the schema, oh, sorry, data frame. Then also I'm collecting all the, you know, the incoming data frame, this incoming data frame. So basically it will collect all the list of columns into one list variable. And now I'm iterating, okay, through for loop, you know, the data frame I have created. So this is containing all the column names along with data type from the uh, data warehouse. Okay, now I'm iterating, I'm checking if the column is part of this source list in the data uh, data frame. If it is there, you know, I'm just doing some casting. So here I'm performing the casting, okay. So the, for the same column, I'm uh, you know, with using with column, I'm creating uh, recreating the column, and here I'm performing casting. You now for casting, I'm giving input of our user defined function, the above one. Okay, here above one, we have created user defined function, Spark data type equivalent. That I'm passing here, and the data type of that particular you no know, data type we are getting from the database. Okay, this this is R. Okay, here this is R. R dot data type, which means the data type from data warehouse for that particular column okay based on that equivalent data type you now data based data type would be passed to this function and this function would return um, data bricks equivalent data type you now based on that value it could be string type or it could be uh, integer type it could be anything okay based on that it would it would perform the casting so basically it will convert all the columns equivalent to assure synapse analytics and in case let us assume, okay, in your target table, there are 10 columns, but in your data frame, you have only eight columns, even it will fail while appending, because, you know, there are missing columns. So as a result, we have to handle this scenario also, mainly, you know, for that purpose, I have added if else condition. So if any of the column is missing, then it will populate that column with null value, even the casting would be done for that null value. So at the end of this uh, operation, you know, it will return one data frame, that would be equivalent to data warehouse table. So, well, um, before executing this uh, UDF, you know, the data frame could have any different, you know, different types of data type. There could be mismatch between data bricks and data warehouse. But after executing this uh, uh, user event function, any input data frame that would be converted equivalent of uh, SQL data warehouse uh, data type. I hope you understood these two functions. Now, proceeding further, I have already created uh, Azure SQL database, as I told, and uh, based on the credentials, you now here I'm defining all the credentials. Let me execute. Then I'm creating, you know, I have stored one of the CSV file in my DBFS file system. I'm just reading and also I'm converting all the data type to string for this demo purpose. And let me execute. Here you can see this is the data. And next I have given print schema. Okay, basically, let me execute one second. You can see this particular data frame, this is containing all string data type. Okay, apart from string, we cannot see any data type. So this particular data frame, okay, this data frame is containing these values and all the columns are of string type. Okay, you can see here, you know, all columns are of string type. Now let's see in my data warehouse or in the database, you now I have created table this table is containing this structure. Here you can see it's integer, uh, varchar, decimal, you know, it's having proper data type. Now, 
this data frame is not having proper data type. Now I want to write this data frame into that table. As a result, what happens is you now this overwrite. I am putting mode overwrite. Overwrite will drop the table in the data warehouse and it will recreate. While recreating, it will just follow the data type of this data data bricks data frame. So here everything is a string. So it will convert uh, the data types to var care in um, data warehouse. Okay. So let me execute this, then you can understand. I am executing this. Now execution is completed. Now let me get into data warehouse and uh, let me first, uh, earlier we executed this one, it was returning zero records. Now let me execute. Our data bricks has returned the data into data warehouse or database. So as a result, we can see the data. At the same time, it would have changed the data type also. Let me refresh, then we can see. Here you can see all the columns are of n var care. So integer, date time, you know, all the data types got truncated, deleted. Then uh, the new table got created with same data type of data bricks. So in data bricks, all the columns of this data frame uh, is a string. As a result, in data warehouse, it has created n var care. So this is not expected result because there could be some other stored procedure which would be taking the data from this table and it will do some mathematical calculation. It will be failed because the data type mismatch. So to handle the situation, now what I have done is, you know, we have already created a function, user defined function, cost data types to target. Okay, this is our um, uh, cost data types to target. This is our function. So internally, you now we are passing all the columns one by one data type. So another UDF will convert, you know, it will convert the data type equivalent to data warehouse. Then based on that data frame would be redefined, recreated. So before that, you know, now in the data warehouse, actually this is having all string column. So I have to drop that. So let me drop it and recreate the table once again. I have recreated. As a result, now let me see the data type. See here, now the data structure, uh, the data type is proper for all the columns. Now I am passing that data frame and uh, this table will be taken from the data warehouse and based on that it will be converted. Now it is in proper data type in the data warehouse. So let me execute this part. The execution is successful. Now it would have converted the data type. Now let me see the print schema for this one. See here, it has converted the data frame. You now the in incoming, that prod DF, it was having all of string type. Now after passing the data frame into this user defined function, it has converted all the columns into proper data type. Product ID integer and the standard cost that is decimal and uh, cell started that is date type. So. Now I am going to write this uh, data frame into data warehouse using overwrite mode. Let me execute. Execution is successful. Now let me get into data warehouse and let me see the data now. There is a data and at the same time let me refresh and see the data type of this prod new. See here even the data type is also same it's proper. So it will not impact our uh, pipeline in the next steps. So this is how you know we can handle data type issue while writing data frame data into any data warehouse. I hope you understood. If you like the content of this video, please like and comment. Also, please subscribe this channel and don't forget to click on the bell button. Thank you.